here. That makes more sense. Okay. Well, thank you all for coming today uh, to this month's uh, reports interest group meeting. I'm filling in for Jessica. So we kind of have an open agenda. Uh, I, I know at previous meetings we had chatted about potentially you know, just sharing uh, thoughts and ideas on how different consortia uh, manage their reports and outputs and everything. So that that could be a good place to start. Um, but before we get started uh, on like an official topic, I did want to share um, one new bug uh, from April. I don't know if I mentioned this during our meeting at the conference or during the hackathon. Um, it is, let me get it in the chat and, and I will share my screen. So it is um, a new report permission uh, that would prevent the creation of reports from shared templates. I put that in the chat as well um, for those who are interested in adding heat or comments. Um, I think it's an interesting bug. I would love some control over um, shared templates. Um, kind of like a double-edged sword where you can't, um, you can't delete your template if, you know, someone else has run um, a report on it. But also, um, I think Beth makes some good comments about, um, you know, having cloned shared templates and then, you know, the original being having an error and then it not really um, any updates to it aren't passed along through to the, to the users as a group. Um, I'd be curious to hear um, anyone's thoughts on it. Or you can add uh, comments as well in the bug. Okay, um, and then on the other end, I did find a new bug report for sharing simple report templates. So kind of, kind of on the flip side for that one, we filed this one back in February and I don't know if anyone um, is using the simple reporter. We're using it in, to a small degree uh, within Spark. Uh, so that's another one I just wanted to share to see if anyone had interest in it. That one I know is um, definitely one reason why we're not using uh, simple reports. Okay. That makes sense. It's a, I think, when we we have to like screenshot, it's very heavily screenshot <laughs> sharing in that we just kind of yeah uh, document it that way. Um, I was just reading through um, Beth's comments on the first one that you linked to, and oh, I yes. am more in agreement with Beth on that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's I think it's a two edged sword. I like Jennifer's comment number one. That mm -hmm. a different mechanism to allow global admins to create shared templates would be nice. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it almost rather like have be able to have the option of not allowing them to clone certain templates mm -hmm. unless they're their own templates. It's yeah. it's complicated. Yeah, yeah. This one, I, I don't. It's not. If this permission was added, I. I don't think we would ever use it. Yeah. Let me just finish. Um, yeah, I think Beth's points are really good, you know, being able to have that kind of like trail of who cloned it and then being able to let them know and things like that, that would be really cool. Yeah. What we do right now is we just, um, if we replace one of our globally shared templates with a new one, um, we just move the old one into like a trash folder since we mm -hmm. can't delete it. And yeah. at least, at least that way the new one is in place and they can 
they can recreate it if they need to. That makes sense. Yeah, we need to... Oh. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Um, Beth's last comment of it would help to know which templates are clones and what template they were cloned from. Is that, I was trying to pull up the Angular reporter and I was trying to think of that, if they did have that information, but it might just be probably just within our own. So not necessarily if I cloned it from someone else's folder. Um, Maybe I'm thinking of what template the report came from. That's probably what I'm thinking of. Maybe I haven't tested that. Oh, hi, Beth. I didn't realize you were here. <laughs> I felt bad I'm talking about you in the third person. Um, so for us in Spark, we kind of share across the consortia and we've been kind of thinking, rethinking it as of late. But um, I was curious if other libraries do share Um, we share the Pines team can create templates that are shared globally, and then we have it set so that um, like local admins and catalogers, I think, can share. Well, we ha we have it set per in per individual. So depending on what level they are, they can either share templates within their system or within or within their branch. Um, and some of them don't have the ability to share. So it just depends on the person. We don't have a blanket blanket rule. Yeah, that might be something to look into for us, I think. And then Britta, they share across Indiana. Yeah, I think that's our problem is that we have just so many templates that are floating around and now become kind of a overwhelming to deal with them all. Can you stop sharing your screen? Which kind of dovetails very nicely into our general discussion for today, unless there are more comments on the bugs. Yeah, cleaning up is hard. I still haven't had a chance to even look at the new um, reports reporter. Um, is it possible in the new one to search by the report ID? I can, I just thought somebody might know offhand. <laughs> Dude, don't I need don't, to figure out it now. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah. If I remember, I remember the search was improved. And I can't remember. Um, but yeah, I don't think the ID was on there. Oh, and my test server is down. <laughs> yeah, and then I noticed it's not on next for us. So I yeah, I think we still have 312 on next. Oh. I didn't know. I forgot. I thought you installed. Oh, it's on our test. Never mind. Oh, okay. Didn't take a look. Okay, so it's it. like I was trying to think about cleanup, and if if we could run, if we ran a report that spit out all of the report IDs that exist in our folders, and then or report templates, I should say, and then compare that to the ones that are actually have been run in the last year or two or whatever, then we could identify which ones we don't need anymore, possibly. So the search is just um, all fields, name, or description. So not. Yeah. 
Is ID a quit possible column? Yeah. It's, oh, good. Well, that makes things easier. Inversion. That would be nice. So if I wanted to look for ID yeah. 22, will it retrieve anything? No. No. Oh, wait, let me do all folders. Nope. No. A bummer and there's no way and so it's only showing you the when you click on a folder it's only showing you the things in that folder too right like if you click on a higher level folder it doesn't show you everything no okay i'm still trying to get used to how the folders display But I guess you could, in theory, like close or open all of them. But it's still only going to show you the contents of one of them at a time, one subfolder yeah. at a time. Yeah. Which is okay if you don't have very many, but we have hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I have to go through mine. And, but yeah. Um, while we're here, is there anything else uh, folks want to see on the the new um, reporter? If you do a search, um, mm -hmm. does it show you what folder it's in? It should. Um, so owning and then. Yes. So you oh, have the awesome. folder, the owner. Um, the name wait and... so owned the folder is named owned yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, so, oh so you have to look up at ud2 first and then go to the folder mm -hmm. okay so that works okay i guess if it's shared it's always going to have the username in that first okay that makes sense yeah. okay can i can what I happens you? if you create a subfolder underneath owned and clone something into that. I wonder if it'll show, if the folder column will show you the folder hierarchy. Or can, um, you just, can you just move one of those into, um, I guess you can only create a subfolder if you're. Yeah, these are not my folders. Yeah. So you have to create your own folders. Okay. Yeah. I would have to. Can you you, know, you can clone one of the shared templates into your own subfolder though? Sorry. Um clone. And then Ooh, this is fancy. Yeah. And then I become the owner. So, but if you um, create a subfolder underneath edu1, sorry, I'm taking you off right off the. No, <laughs> I'm excited um, about looking, having time to look at this. <laughs> uh, what do we want to call it? We'll just call it words connection. <laughs> <laughs> well, somebody's not like what? <laughs> what did you do? Okay. And then, and then, do you want me to move this? Yeah. Try that. I don't like how those buttons aren't the right height, same height. Yeah, that is a little jarring. So then I did move it over to my. Okay, so now if you search for that folder name or that uh, template name, let's see what the folder says. Oh, it doesn't. It only shows the subfolder name. <clears throat> mm hmm. So you oh, still have to is... do a bunch. It I would expect it to show the the hierarchy. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can put that in as a bug. Yeah, or a wish list at least. I can. I'll I'll go ahead and 
put in a wish list for that. Oh, let me okay. let me let me grab a screenshot of your screen really fast. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't have to redo it. <laughs> you want um Okay, got it. <laughs> do you want the um this part too? Uh oh. Um no, that's fine. I'll just describe it. Okay. I'll stop taking up everybody's time. <laughs> This Thank you. It. Yeah. Is there anything else anyone else wants to, to see? No, wait, let me go in the comments. I always lose the, the chat. I'm sorry. Oh, wow. There are all these chats. I'm so sorry. Okay. Um, Um, okay, anything else with the um, new reporter? So the other topic that we were going to talk about was uh, how how everyone does like clean up and um, management of their uh, reports and templates. I know um, at for Spark, we again share across the consortium. And then um, we uh, delete, they have like a cron job that deletes all the old uh, outputs after 60 days. And then it also re deletes any non reoccurring reports. So I delete those, uh, but that's to the extent of our cleanup. We don't manage individuals, folders or anything. It's kind of on the individual users to um, to do cleanup. Um, I would be curious if how others are doing this kind of work. Um, we have barely touched reports cleanup, which we <laughs> desperately need to do. But one thing we did do last year was we ran a report of reports that were run during a time period. And then, um, we went through those to, to match them up with staff that were no longer there and <laughs> some of whom hadn't been there in years <laughs> and we were able to go in and I think um by looking at how many times those reports were run we we saved like 13 that like I don't remember what it was Susan do you remember was it like 1300 reports or uh report instances yeah. or something like that I want to say, well, now I'm, if you said 1300, I was like, I think it was like 11,000. It might have been 11,000 or 13,000. Yeah. A lot. Um, yeah. And yeah, so, there were many from old employees. Yeah. So at least they weren't hogging the reports engine anymore. No, that's a good idea. I think we did something similar like a year ago where we went through and we looked to see what recurring reports were taking place. So. I think we might have gotten that idea from you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it it was kind of scary because a lot of the like some of the stuff gets emailed out and we took, you know, a really close look at those like are is the staff still active because we were not wild about a library not having like or using an email address that's not like library issued. You know, a like Gmail oh. Like mm -hmm. A few of our libraries have Gmail accounts, so it's hard to decide or differentiate, like, is this a personal email account? Is this a library email account? So, yeah, we cleaned up some of those, too. And some of and quite a few of our libraries in the last few years changed their domain names, too. So mm -hmm. they're going to their old, old non-existing accounts. Yeah, that's a good point. 
Um, as part of our uh, reports permissions project, and there are a few Tales Spark Library staff here, so you're getting the inside scoop <laughs> for tomorrow's meeting. Um, we will be looking at um, a reports that are being run by accounts that no longer have the permissions. So we'll be kind of checking in with folks and being like, okay, if you still need this report to keep running, you're going to have to set it up on either a new another account that has the reports permission or you need to evaluate and see if this staff member should still should have the reports permission so oh okay so Beth you you straight out delete report templates and reports if the staff are no longer there and Allison they remove after 18 months that's pretty good I always wondered how people deal with if they still have Zool templates hanging around. Um, I know I heard the new reporter, <laughs> you and I should talk. <laughs> um, the I heard the new reporter, uh, well, the, the angularized one, will not uh, work with Zool templates or ones that were converted from Zool. Does anyone know if that's true? That's what I remember hearing. And that was when my yeah, alarm started going off of, we need to clean up these templates or I guess reclone or yeah, mm -hmm. clone the Zool. So it's more current. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like Taryn said in the chat, we have so many people still using Zool templates and yeah, some of the views have changed since, you know, 2000 seven mm -hmm. um and we can't really recreate those um or so i think there's just one it's like the classic circulation that we have um mm -hmm. so it's been hard to move people away from those templates they're so used to yeah i've been encouraging when i run into people who have problems with the report template that was cloned from zool even now i've been kind of encouraging them to not to just rebuild it completely and start from scratch it's really not that hard to rebuild it i mean yeah. well i mean it depends i guess on we always try to put um like a description of what display fields and filters we use in in the notes field when we create templates mm -hmm. so it's super easy to rebuild by looking at that even if we can't open the old one That is a really good, a good practice, one that I should follow, but I'm really bad about doing. Yeah, it it takes it's like takes as much time as building the template in the first place. Yeah. I've been trying to put the version of of Evergreen that we're using in the template name, just in case there's ever a problem. Oh, that's to really go back good. and know that that template was okay. Oh, that's a good idea. I never thought of that. That is a good idea, Mary Beth. And to kind of follow up with what you were saying before about um, the reports permission, mm -hmm. um, when I was working on that project for our, our library system, I did run a report of reports as well. And that's how I found some reports that were in accounts that nobody was using anymore. And I've tried to move all of those recurring reports to just one report account so mm -hmm. that I know that I don't have to have that coming out of somebody's staff account that I can just go in and change the email address to whoever that mm -hmm. report was in the the report account. Yeah, that's a, a good practice. At least I found it helpful to have like one main account that uses all the reoccurring. Okay. 
So I guess there's not really any secret to management. It's just kind of like herding cats. Just have a lot of them. <laughs> it would be nice to um, add like tips like these into the wiki in all of our spare time. Yeah. <laughs> just so... especially for any new libraries coming on. So they kind of get started out on a good foot. Yeah, because once you're down the rabbit hole and you have like thousands of templates or hundreds of templates, you're really kind of <laughs> feels like a Sisyphean uh, effort. You get bonus points for using Sisyphean. <laughs> Thank you. I always want to use it. So. I can Sometimes. never I can never remember the word. <laughs> I like, you know, that story. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible. Okay, well, let me write these down and then I can at least put them in the notes. So, um, Mary Beth, you do the version of Evergreen in your template notes. Do you put it in like the description? I put it in the name of the template. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then, uh, Taryn, you said you put like the path. Um, yeah, we put in the notes um, or description, whatever that field is called, we put the the report source and the filters, the paths for the filters and the paths for the display fields into it. So it's long, but um, mm -hmm. but it's really handy later on down the road. Yeah. Does anybody use the external URL for like documentation? We do on some things, like if there's specific instructions people have to follow um, to like how to interpret or, or use those reports templates, especially for something like inventory, like that's such a, there's so many steps to that process. The report is just one little tiny step. Mm -hmm. I've used it a couple times, but I don't think that people use the, follow that link. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah. There's a bug. Yeah, there's definitely a bug with it too. Like depending on where you click on it, it works and sometimes it doesn't. So yeah. I used it the other day because I created a report template to help libraries figure out what items their patrons were placing on hold that they didn't own at any of their branches. And almost the entire thing had to be done in Excel. So I read, I read up this big long document on how, what to do in Excel to make it, to filter oh, out what wow. you didn't want. Yeah. Those are always fun when you're like, I have a template for you, but you're going to have to do a lot of work with it. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. All right. So those are three good tips, I think. Um, and then, you know, just regular um, delete outputs probably would be a good one also to add. If for new users or new setup people, I think that making sure that your permissions are set up to um, make sure that only certain people or have access to reports or certain report functions, because that's been a bit of an a bit of an issue for us, <laughs> um, as well as that. I don't think we've ever we have a problem with templates that we hide, but don't people you don't use the new ones, mm -hmm. so they're still there because we can't delete them because people ran reports off of them, so. Um, Keen is sharing um, how to do stat cat reports. Um, I think that will be easier with the, the new redesigned re uh, reporter because you don't have to do the, you can use nullability, but it's already kind of set up for you. So, um, but that is a good one to note. Nullability.
Yeah, stack cats just generally. They're very helpful, but very tricky to use. Anything else that you think a new user of reports should know? I, I think that having a setting up a report of reports mm -hmm. and running it periodically, it would be really helpful because then you know what's being used. I have one, but I don't run it often enough. <laughs> yeah, uh, so. I fall in that boat as well. But yeah, checking in on your reports periodically is very helpful. I think that the report by inactive users or whatever you want to call those, I have not done that. So I'm going to look into that. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, I think um, I want to say it was it wasn't too hard. I'd have to look and see. Do I have it? I think it might be on the um, on the wiki as well. Thanks. I'll take a look. Yes, there are. There's a bunch of good ones on the wiki. So templates used by library, report runner, and date range, and then unused templates. I'm sure you can adjust it to find inactive. <clears throat> All right. Anything else that you think a new reports person should know, or just in general about maintaining and Tending to your reports. <laughs> yeah, the unused templates is really good. All right, um, are there any other thoughts or comments or topics that folks would like to discuss today? Okay, so apropos of nothing, <laughs> is there anyone else who would love to see simple reports not called simple? <laughs> What would you propose? I I have no um, uh, simple reports if you already run reports. Um, <laughs> I, I'm thinking about that. So if anybody has any ideas, uh, that would be great. And that's actually particularly important for new users, people who have just migrated to Evergreen, because it only includes your Evergreen data. And if you migrate, you can't run a waiting report in it with that has any meaning whatsoever because all of your legacy data is not included in the report so so we we migrated five years ago mm -hmm. and there are items that look like they have 
not circulated in five years, but the, which you would consider those for weeding anyway, but they have hundreds of circulations over their lifetime. So that, that's that been um, something we've been making, have, you know, making sure our users understand and know. Um, we use, or at least we, we use the full reporter for that one, and we use the last copy status update date for a little while, maybe like two years. And then that way we know, you know, if it's moved since you migrated or before you migrated. Yes. But yes. And we not great. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. It's uh, in, yeah, in, uh, it's just, uh, anyway, so we'll, that's a different discussion. The simple reporter is a different discussion. So I'm going to zip it now. <laughs> yeah. So the simple reporter, yeah, it's not as nuanced as, you know, it could be, but I think it's the first pass. So they really haven't done too much since. But yeah, the name could be a little different. Anything else? Any general reports questions that anyone has? And Taryn added that bug. Oh wait, is it simple or is it the new reporter? Oh, for me, um, wasn't that in the new reporter or the Angular reporter? Yeah, but for the head for the subject, you say simple reports. Oh, did I? God dang it! <laughs> Sorry. Okay, we were talking about simple reports. So yeah, my brain is not at its best. Okay, fixed. I also put the wrong version of Evergreen in there. All right. Um, if there's nothing else, we can adjourn early. Um, I do want to share that we do have, um, we're going to be having uh, Tiffany uh, join us in a, a little, not maybe not next month, but a, a month or two from now to talk about acquisitions reports. So if you have any um, topics in the meantime that you would like to talk about, um, let me know and we can set it up for next month. I will say that is probably the hardest thing about doing an interest group is finding topics. So if anyone has one, we'd appreciate um, the suggestion. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Have you. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you. Bye. Bye.